everlasting life. Good morning, I greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. And the cross behind me, like the cross that they put him on, is empty. Amen. They took him down off that cross and they put him in a borrowed tomb. And he stayed there for a little while. But then, he got up. Well. Good morning once again. Our scripture text will be familiar because we actually just read it. It's coming from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. All right. And in the New Living Translation, he says it this way. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. Yes. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Yes. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy, yes. and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message, and as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. For a title this morning, keep moving forward, let's celebrate. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to touch my lips and write my heart that I may speak the words that you have given me to speak. Yes, With power, passion, and purpose, Lord, I pray that I may open my mouth boldly that you that I may speak what you have given. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So leading up to this point, it had been an action-packed week known as Passion Week. It was a week-long celebration culminating with the Passover celebration. They were celebrating the death angel passing over the homes of the Israelites, sparing them from the tenth plague God had struck the Egyptians with when Pharaoh refused to let his people go. The tenth plague was the death of the firstborn son of every Egyptian. But because the children of Israel placed blood on the door, doorposts of their homes, the death angel passed over their homes, sparing their firstborn. Amen. Jesus began the week riding into town on a donkey to shouts of Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. People laid their garments and palm branches on the streets as they celebrated his triumphal entry. They thought their days of oppression by the Roman government were about to end. They thought Jesus was finally going to overthrow this crooked regime and they would rule again. They thought their long-awaited king had arrived. Despite some obvious differences, they still had hope. So what was different about Jesus? Well, first, Jesus had an assignment. He had a mission, and it wasn't to overthrow the sitting government. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. Jesus didn't come to sit as a king on an earthly throne the way the people knew kings. He was the king of kings and lord of lords. Yes. Jesus didn't come into town wearing royal robes, riding on a large stallion. He came humbly on a donkey. And Jesus didn't have an entourage that went before him announcing his arrival with trumpets and pomp and circumstances. He came alone. The people had been oppressed so long they were looking for a savior. But what they failed to see was Jesus was not just a savior. He was the savior. So because he was not the savior they thought they were looking for, they turned on him. Have you ever been looking forward to getting something, but when it arrived, it wasn't 
at all what you thought it was going to be. It was the wrong size or the wrong color. It was broken. It didn't do what the write-up said it was going to do. Uh, he wasn't as nice as you thought he was. She couldn't cook the way you thought she could. On, How did you feel about it? Well. Were you disappointed? Were you frustrated? Maybe you even got angry, depending on how long you waited on the item. You may have saved up for months trying to get this thing, even years. And then when you get it, it just wasn't what you expected. It could depend on how much it cost and what the return policy was, if they even had a return policy. How much time or money did you spend with and on that person? Maybe you bought tickets to a show, even if you received free tickets and you arrived at the venue expecting your favorite artist to perform. But the person who came out on stage was not who you paid to see. In fact, you had never heard of this person and they couldn't perform. Well. Would you get upset and demand your money back? This crowd had not spent money to see Jesus, but they had invested their hope in this man. They just knew their troubles would soon be over. They just knew Jesus was about to flip the script, but then something happened during the week that changed all of that. Well. Roman soldiers came and arrested Jesus. They had a trial with some fake witnesses and railroaded him into a death sentence, and not just any death sentence. It was a death sentence reserved for the worst offenders. And now, since Jesus never fought back, since he didn't say a word to defend himself, since the people's hopes were crushed, they turned on him. There was a custom of allowing a stay of execution for one prisoner, and the people got to decide. Yeah, yeah. So when Jesus was offered up, the same people who last week shouted Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the son of David, now shouted, crucify him, crucify him. My, 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 how quickly people will turn on you when they don't do, when you don't do what they expect or what they want. Despite all the people Jesus had healed and delivered, and fed, despite all the lives he had changed for the better, despite the fact that he had never harmed a soul. Pastor Ed preached this morning, the earth couldn't hold all the books if they tried to write everything he did. But despite all that, they still shouted, crucify him. Mm -hmm. They still wanted him dead. Well. And so, the people got what they wanted. It was a gruesome death that took place that Friday. It looked like the Romans had succeeded. It looked like the people got their way. It looked like Jesus was dead. It looked like Satan had won. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not always what it looks like. You see, that was not the end of the story. It was really the beginning of our story. It was the beginning of our celebration. You have to keep moving forward to get to the celebration. Let's celebrate. Because yes, while it is true that Jesus died on that Friday, the fact is they didn't kill him. He gave up the ghost after he had completed his assignment. While it is true they took him down off that cross and placed him in a tomb that belonged to someone else, the fact is he would only use it for a few days. While it is true they rolled a stone in front of his tomb, the fact is God would move it out of the way. Yeah. And now the reason for our celebration begins. Jesus was buried in such a hurry, they didn't have time to finish their customary process. So at the first opportunity they had, three women went to finish the job. Mark identifies the women as Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. On the way to the tomb, the ladies were discussing how they were going to move the stone out of the way so they could finish the burial process. You ladies know how we do. We're walking along and we're just chit-chatting and we're talking, you know, so they, so we know that the Roman soldiers put that tomb in there, but how do you think we're going to get that out of the way? Well, I'm not sure, but let's just keep going. It'll work out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out something when we get there, so let's just keep moving. There, there was an obstacle in their way, but they kept moving forward to accomplish the task that had been started on Friday. 
When life may roll a stone in your path, trust God and keep moving forward to get to the celebration. To get the full picture of all that happened during the resurrection, you would have to read all four gospel accounts found in Mark, Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, and John 20. It's like when you uh, interview witnesses that uh, saw an accident. Everybody had a different vantage point. Everybody was seeing it from a different place. So they all had a different part of the story, but you put them all together and you'll get the whole story. Our text in Matthew's gospel says early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Mark tells us they were talking about the stone, but Matthew tells us how it was handled. Let's fill it in. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. Yeah, see, suddenly, suddenly, don't be surprised if your stone is suddenly rolled away. Earthquakes shake things up. God may be shaking some things up in your life because you've gotten complacent. You've gotten too comfortable in your situation. You've gotten too comfortable being a victim instead of a victor. You've gotten too comfortable renting instead of owning your own home. Because God said we will be the lenders and not the borrowers. You've gotten too comfortable on your job instead of getting on and getting to your career or starting your own business. God is shaking things up because, ladies, you've gotten too comfortable being a girlfriend instead of being the good thing God said you are. The Bible says the man who finds a wife findeth a good thing. Men, you for, you've gotten too comfortable with your wife and you've forgotten that you found a good thing. Ladies, you've gotten too comfortable with your husband and you've forgotten that he is a man of valor. God is shaking things up because you've gotten too comfortable with the mediocre and you stopped striving for excellence. You've gotten too comfortable with good enough instead of endeavoring to be great. God is shaking some things up to move your stone. Can you see the angel sitting on it? Can you see the angel with his face shining like lightning and his clothes white as snow? Your haters will shake with fear because they don't know what's happening, but you, you shouldn't have fear because you know what's happening is for your good. Yeah. All things work together for good to them who love God and are the call according to his purpose. What's happening is getting you ready for the celebration. On, Keep moving forward. The celebration is about to begin. Hallelujah. Your haters will fall into a dead faint. Step over them. <laughs> and continue to move forward. Don't stop to pick them up. They'll be all right. Move toward what God has for you. You're about to meet your deliverer. Keep moving forward. The earthquake didn't come to shake you. It came to knock your enemies out of the way. Keep moving. You're about to get to your celebration. Listen for your instructions. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Just as he said what happened. Come see where his body was lying. Just in case you don't believe me, come and see for yourself. When God come, begins to shake things up in your life, don't faint and don't be afraid. Keep moving forward. Open your eyes as he lights your path to victory and leads you to the celebration. The angel invited them to in to see the empty tomb, the place where Jesus was. But he wasn't there. On the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. But that wasn't the end. Just when you think it's over, just when they've counted you out, just when they've left you for dead, we have breaking news. The angel told the women, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Yeah. Remember what I have told you. Yeah. The first ones to carry the news of Christ's resurrection was women. They thought they were going to finish a burial. Instead, they were the first to announce a resurrection. They carried the news that was the reason to celebrate. The women ran quickly from the tomb. 
they were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. Have you ever been scared and happy at the same time? You ever had that nervous laugh where something jumped out and scared you, but then you knew it wasn't going to hurt you, so you were like, ah! <laughs> and, 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 you, and you, could, you were trying to do both at the same time. Yeah, they were afraid, they were frightened, but they were also glad. Yeah. They could have been frightened because to see an angel is a pretty scary thing. You know, we, we think of angels as, you know, on Valentine's Day, they have the little cherubs with the wings and they're fluttering and flying around. But angels were men of war and they were big and their wings were huge. And when they saw them, they fainted and they were afraid. But he said, don't be afraid. What else could the ladies have been afraid of? Well, they could have been frightened because of the news they had to share. Would the disciples believe them? Would they move and go where the women told them to go? Because in this society, men didn't really listen to women. Uh, would they be dismissed because they were women? But still, they rushed to give the disciples the angels' message. They kept moving forward. The disciples had returned to what they knew. Mm -hmm. They were keeping a low profile. Well. They were afraid the people might turn on them next. So they hid themselves away. They went back to what they did before the three years they had spent with Christ. They were still operating in their own power. They had not received the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. So instead of hanging around Jerusalem, Christ sends the message to me in Galilee. The women were excited because the master they loved was not dead. Amen. He was alive. Yes. Again, and to top it off. The scripture says, and as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Let the celebration begin. Yes. It's one thing to hear about Jesus' resurrection. Uh -huh. But it's a whole other thing to see him with your own eyes. Amen. It's one thing to hear somebody else's testimony. But it's a whole other thing to have your own. It's one thing to witness somebody else's miracle, but it's a whole other thing to have your own. When you have your own, it's something else. So not only were the women the first to get the news of his resurrection, they were also the first to see his resurrected body. If there was any doubt at all, there was none now. Jesus had shown himself to these female servants of his. The women worshipped him like, he, like the God he was. Not only was he their God and master, he was their teacher and friend. When God gives you a task, don't be surprised if he meets you along the way. When you are where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to do, God will always be in the midst of it. He'll meet you along the way. They got so wrapped up in worship, Jesus had to remind them of their task. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Sometimes when you get so wrapped up in worship, you forget you had something to do. It slips your mind that you had an assignment to complete. Today, this day, we celebrate the resurrected Savior of the world. Because of his sacrifice and resurrection, you also have the opportunity to rise again. I come to tell you this morning, we will all die. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Yeah. There will be a resurrection and a judgment. Uh -huh. The question is, where will you spend eternity? Uh -huh. Your soul will spend eternity somewhere. Well. When you stand before Almighty God, uh -huh. will you be on his right or his left? Well. The sheep on the right will hear, come, ye blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Yes. But the goats on the left will hear, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. Jesus came so that none would be lost. Right. He came so you could be counted among the sheep. He came so you can have life everlasting in heaven. He came so your life here on earth would be blessed. He came so when times get rough, you've got help. He came so when you have to deal with grief, you have a comforter. Jesus came to pay the debt that you owed and I owed, but now we 
are debt free. Anybody ever been debt free? You're struggling, you're struggling, you're trying, you're trying, you're trying to get debt free. And then all of a sudden you make it and you celebrate. You send that last payment off and you say, yes, I made it. Hallelujah. We're debt free. Jesus paid the debt. He paid it all. There's nothing left. There is no remaining balance. I ask you now, which do you want to be? Christ died to pay your debt, but he rose to show you you will also rise again. Yes. Let your celebration begin today. Make Jesus Lord of your life by choosing to accept him into your heart. Yes, Lord. Salvation comes with so much more. Mm -hmm. Will you choose it today? Yes. For our online viewers, it's a simple prayer. Mm -hmm. Father, I know I'm a sinner. Yes, Please forgive me. I believe Jesus is your son, that he died for my sins, rose again, and now sits at your right hand, interceding on my behalf. Yes. I give you my heart. Be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, congratulations and welcome to the kingdom. Welcome. Now find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church in your area where you can work out your soul salvation. Yes. Using your gifts and talents for the kingdom of God and edification of the saints. Mm -hmm. If you would like to connect with us here at Love Christian Center, tag us on whatever platform you may be watching. Or go to our website at lovechristianctr.org. Send us an email and we will connect with you. Yes. If you'd like to financially support this ministry, go to the giving page of our web website. Mm -hmm. If you're here in the sanctuary, we invite you now. Yes, if you've never accepted Jesus, is your personal Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. The doors of the church are open for salvation. Let us stand. Yes, Lord.